Hey guys, my name is Emma and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm bringing you the very first The Bibliotherapy Sessions with me and Amy Gets Lid. So basically what is happening is Amy and I are buddy reading a book each month but then we're giving each other a list of five questions about that book so it can become a bit more of a discussion piece slash book review and then we are posting them both on our channels. I will link her channel down below and her video if it's up already and if it isn't then I will add it as soon as it is and this month we are talking about Suicide Club by Rachel Hang. Next month we're going to be doing Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield so if you are interested in buddy reading along with us it's just going to be for the whole month of April and if you do want to get involved in these videos at all then just comment down below and we can send you some questions. The idea is that we're sending each other different questions so that that way you get kind of a full more comprehensive look at the book and it's questions that we personally had for the other human being. So Amy has sent me her list of five questions and I'm really excited to just jump in and get through them. A very brief synopsis of the book The Suicide Club. Suicide Club is speculative fiction and it's set in a world where people don't really die anymore in the same way. Our medical technology has progressed to a point where we have things like diamond hard skin, you can get like bionic blood put in you. So with all of these uh, biomedical advances basically you end up with a number being assigned to you that is your rough lifespan from when you were born and then that kind of dictates how much of like how many of the resources available get assigned to you in society. So the average lifespan ends up becoming something like, you know, 150, 200, 300, like it gets a bit crazy. There's talk about like releasing another wave that might make people immortal. Um, and it's just sort of looking at the ramifications of all of this there. The story focuses on the main character, Leah, who is just really focused and dedicated to this world she's up for promotion she's very excited and then her father walks back into her life and he's a bit of a radical and it's looking at things from there the suicide club specifically references people who are against this idea and basically commit suicide in very public ways they commit suicide and film it and then post it as kind of a guerrilla warfare action against the state because they don't believe that humans should live like this question number one is what were your expectations going into this book and were those expectations met I'd purposely tried to keep not too many expectations for a book like this because I find that when you walk into something like speculative fiction expecting one thing, the author has so many different directions of where they can go. It can be quite easy to become disappointed because um, you thought it was going to be one thing and they've decided to take a different scope to it. With the name like Suicide Club, I was kind of thinking that the Suicide Club would be more of a focus and I really don't think the book touched on that and did that very well or explored that in the way that I wanted. So I guess those were my very limited expectations and they weren't really met. So question two is, how well do you feel the author built the world in this book? Do you think it was successful? If not, do you think it would have been more successful in another setting? I don't think that the world building was particularly successful, but I think it's because too much, she tried to do too much in one go. So with a book like this, you really need to limit the scope of what you are trying to do to be able to do it effectively. We had so many different threads going on. There was the biomedical advances and what that kind of implied for um, what you should look for in life and and what is a good thing to do with life because they talk about um like keeping your cortisol levels low and keeping everything very calm and de-stressed and nobody ever does anything risky and you know should you even run because that can be bad for your knees and it becomes very obsessed with staying alive for the sake of staying alive but not necessarily really living so that was kind of one whole thing then you had the other whole thing about like the almost gattaca style um, numbers being assigned to people, how many resources should be dedicated towards them, how much should we care, that real like classes but based on um, like physical ability separating things out and that had a whole thing going on to it there. You had this like political unrest, the suicide club, what do they represent, how are they conveying things, are they doing it well and some of the implications of like some of the very dystopian future type things of people being um, having the biomedical tech tested on them and what that implied and what we do with people where it goes wrong and all sorts of stuff going on there and I just think that there was too much in one one go for the world building and no idea ever got really explored to a point where I felt comfortable with it. So in that respect I think it was a cool idea but she tried to go too far and didn't build anything really. I don't think the setting was the issue. I think that it was potentially 
I don't want to say the author's skill because that sounds like really insulting and I think that Rachel Heng is a perfectly good author. I just think it's that she tried to take on too many things and needed somebody to be like, whoa Nelly, let's just chill. Let's just like ring it back. Let's pick one and do that. It feels very much like when you were at university and you would try and do everything in your essay and be like, I'm going to prove this and your, your supervisor would be like, no, no, we're not going to prove anything. You're an undergrad, chill out. All you're going to do is discuss the options around this because we don't prove stuff. Calm down. And I'd be like, oh yeah, no, that's fair play. So somebody just needed to do this to her. Question three is, did the pacing of the book seem too fast, too slow or just right? Plot wise, plot wise, I just don't think there was much to it. Really? Um, oh, this is a hard one. I've not looked at all the, any of these questions before just going for it. I think because you are trying to cram these like three different aspects of the world building in and we're trying to get to know Leah as a character and then we're also trying to get to know I think it was Amelia was the other one and then there's a lot happening there so I think it felt fast paced just because it was like plot point plot point exposition plot point plot point and like like really rattling through these things really quickly like here's a bunch of information and here's more and here's more and like you end up kind of chasing with it and I definitely found myself like turning the page quickly and it was one of these books that made you want to keep reading and built a load of momentum but then stopping and looking back on it I don't really know what happened in it and like if if it really counts as fast paced, if I don't feel like we actually went anywhere, if we look at kind of from the beginning to the end of the book, I don't think much actually occurred, but it felt like a roller coaster race at the same time. So I guess it was technically fast paced, and I was quite happy with the fact that it was like barreling through things because I think if it had slowed down, it would have been more obvious from the beginning that there wasn't much to it, and that would have really detracted from the reading experience because I really enjoyed reading this book. Like, I the actual reading of it was was wonderful and it was a really good couple of days but it's only like with a bit of hindsight and a bit of space and being able to look back that you kind of go that actually wasn't great like objectively that wasn't well put together but I had a good time. Four which character did you identify with the most? <sighs> Not Leah she was crazy there was a whole like psychopathic sub note to her I really felt for Amelia, I think that she was in such a difficult position, to go into her backstory a little bit more. Her mum had one of the upgrades to do with her heart and that kept her heart going and basically um, the rest of her body would shut down a good 50 years before her heart would ever fail so she was being kept alive almost in like a um, bodily induced catatonic state and Amelia had the decision you know she was taking care of her and she had to watch her mother go through this and then she had to decide what she was going to do about it now and I felt like I mean it's the kind of thing I've never actually been in that position luckily yet I've never seen a relative deteriorate over such a slow period of time but there was just like something about her chapters that really struck a chord and was very emotional and very intense to read and deal with and I think that euthanasia and old age and how we deal with those things is something that is a very interesting uh, topic in our society and it's something that will become more and more problematic as we get better and better at, at making medical advances and that's where books like this really can come into their own because they can comment on things that are potentially only like 50 60 years away potentially not even like it could be that i'm going to be that person who when i hit my 70s and 80s that i'm going to be the one who potentially has had the medical advancements to a point where I'm being kept alive longer than I necessarily want to be and that's that's something which is very important to discuss and something that I read a lot about at university and it's a topic that I think is, is very close to my heart but I don't think this book went very far with it because it was trying to do so many other things and this is what I mean by like it kind of brushed on the surface so any of those moments where we we were with Amelia and we were really dealing with that I'm sure her name is Amelia it's fine it was something that I was most invested with and I don't know if I see myself in her character but I could see because I've not been through that yet but I can see how in a few years time I could be that character I could see me becoming that person and being in that situation and having the same kind of moral quandary and emotional turmoil to do with it whereas Leah I had no connection with as a main character I could never see myself in a position I didn't feel like there was any real connection with her at all so I guess Amelia would be the one Whew things got deep there whoa 
Okay, um, question five. What did you feel was the overall message of the book? And do you connect it to our society now? I think that the overall message of the book was that there wasn't an overall message because I think that it was trying to do, as I've said, way too many things. I think if you could tease out a few of the messages, it was like, human life isn't just sacred for the sake of human life. It's about what you do with your life and trying to have experiences rather than being concerned with just staying alive and that society is often really shitty. <laughs> Is that a message? I feel like that's a message with every speculative fiction book. I do think it really resonates with our society today. I think that it is very powerful and interesting to consider where we can go with biotech because of some of the the cool stuff that we have available to us, which is both brilliant because it means that we can do so much good with them, but with any technological advancement there is always going to be that double-edged sword that you can also do stuff that's terrible. The, some of the problems with some of the technology that we get is we get these things so quickly and there aren't protocols and things in place to consider what we should do with them before we go ahead and just do it. And then you've got people playing with things for uh, capital gain or all that kind of thing that that don't understand what they're playing with and it can reach stages where you do have some serious issues there. Suicide Club isn't doing anything that hasn't really been done before, but I do think that it was kind of fun to bring these, these questions back to the forefront. So yeah, so that is my thoughts on the Suicide Club. I may do a formal book review for this or this might just be it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that Amy's answers are also really interesting as well and that this gives you kind of a comprehensive view of the book. That is it from me. Have a wonderful reading week. Um, if you want to join in next month with Once Upon a River do feel free just comment down below and if this has made you want to read Suicide Club then definitely comment down below because that'd be really interesting to know and I will chat to you soon. Bye guys!